Welcome to a new series of video tutorials and in this one we're going to be looking at Nina. This is one of the more recent image capture applications and over the years, especially the last 10 years, image capture has changed quite dramatically and 10 years ago the choice was extremely limited to very simplistic capture applications like Nebulosity and heavyweights like Maxim DL which were expensive and yet still didn't offer the degree of control that most users have today and required even more expensive applications to run them externally to give a degree of automation and flexibility. Like many others I started off with Maxim DL but I quickly realized it wasn't for me for a number of reasons and I moved on to Sequence Generator Pro, which was initially a front end to Nebulosity. This has served me faithfully for many years and it allowed me for the first time to do unattended imaging with a small observatory in my back garden. But this video is about Nina, another deep sky imaging application. And like Sequence Generator Pro, it can do sequences of exposures and filter changes and it can run unattended. It can also do more advanced things and at the same time if you are a user who doesn't want to necessarily have huge amounts of sophistication at your fingertips it also can pare down its interface and keep things simple for people who just want to do a very simple exposure sequence. But I just wanted to introduce you to the main screen and what's available to you. So you've got a primary menu down the left hand side and sometimes this primary menu brings up a secondary menu. And here, in this Equipment tab, you would decide what equipment you have. And uniquely, in the case of some cameras and some other devices, it doesn't necessarily always rely on ASCOM to connect to your device. And in the case of QHY cameras and things like Pegasus um, uh, power boxes, it has its own direct drivers that are using the device's um, application interface as opposed to an ASCOM interface. And this does give benefits in terms of speed and in some cases reliability too. The other thing that it mostly does is it sets up primary information about the camera. So for instance, if I connect this camera, it will bring up my QHY camera. And in this particular case, there are some settings that you can further adjust, for instance regarding warming and cooling. And likewise, further down this list, you've got things such as um, default gain, uh, USB uh, limit, which you don't want um, the USB port to be um, conflicting with others, and so forth. And there's a number of device specific settings, there's a number of different modes for the camera, and you can warm it and cool it and so forth and it brings in information quite usefully from the camera so you understand what the driver version is. That's quite handy. And there are similar tabs for other bits of equipment, the filter wheel, the focuser, a rotator, which includes a manual rotator, the telescope mount, the guider, um, switches, which are a fairly new thing to um, astronomical imaging where you can turn things on and off or read analog or send out values, say, to dew heaters. You've got flat panel automation, you've got weather, so it can bring in either weather information from sensor or from uh, the internet. You've got dome controls in terms of connecting to your dome and general status and very simplistic um, you know, opening and closing of domes and things. And a safety monitor. So this is typically looking at things like rain, cloud, humidity, or potentially it might be looking at light levels. The Equipment tab allows you to set up all your equipment and it has a few controls on that equipment as well. And every time you change something along this line and you, you connect to it, it's recorded and it's stored in the current equipment profile. The other tabs, briefly, there's a Sky Atlas which allows you to have a, a peruse about what's available and where it is in the sky and it allows you to filter different objects by type and size and brightness and so forth. There's a framing tab, which is a lovely way of setting up your exact framing of your target with your camera. 
and it can load an image or it can load a coordinate and then bring it in from a catalog. So a number of different ways of bringing in the, the, the initial sort of general view and then it allows you to do the framing precisely by dragging a box around the image that you want to take. There's a flat wizard which as the name implies it allows you to set up flat exposures and uh, control um, uh, the flat panel if necessary. There's the sequencer and this is where a lot of time will be spent in future videos. This is where you can either set a very simplistic number of exposures to, for a particular target um, or you can open a previously stored target and do something with it. You can import targets and there's something called the advanced sequencer which is where if you particularly want to do your imaging in a certain way the advanced sequencer is maybe where you go and it's one of the unique features of Nina. Then the last three tabs you've got an imaging tab so this is the status of what your imaging is doing. It does have a few controls, but not many. So for instance, you can take a quick image, quick and dirty image, and you can change your filter and you can change your focus position. But that's about it. There's not too much in the way of control directly from this, this window. It's mostly about the current status. There's an options tab, which brings up a sub menu. And this allows you to store, um, modify and save different profiles. Although the profiles, once you're in a profile, they are updated automatically so you don't have to keep on remembering to save it. And that profile also includes information about how you want the program to look. So for instance, this little button here allows you to change the appearance and you can change for a whole bunch of different uh, screen appearances depending on your particular needs. So I'm going to flip it back and use my custom one. The other thing you can do is set up things about where it sets up its astrometry information in terms of its longitude and latitude, how high you are, and also it can bring things in from a GPS uh, receiver. And you're able to set up a custom horizon so that when you're doing imaging, it can automatically work out whether it's above your actual physical imaging horizon or not. And it doesn't have to be a uniform angle for the whole set of azimuth values. And there are other tabs as well. So you've got the equipment tabs, which have further information, which are equipment specific. For instance, how you want your telescope to work in terms of um, its focal length, uh, in terms of settle times. You've got weather information, planetarium information, and your filter wheel information. Similarly for autofocus, in terms of how you want the autofocus to work, how many samples do you want to take, uh, do you want it to be binned, um, do you want to just simply do a, a linear fit or a curve fit to the best focus position, and also it can store focus offsets. So if you've already predetermined the differences in the focus positions as you change the filter in the filter wheel, rather than do an autofocus run, it can simply move the focus motor by the requisite number of steps and you're there. And in this panel as well, if your focus controller doesn't have it already, there's backlash control. There's similar controls for the dome. So dome or roll off roof, doesn't matter. It allows you to, to, to set what the parameters are for the physics of your mount and how big it is and so forth. And on the imaging tab, there's some settings about how you want it to store images, um, where you want to store them, what the file name and folder structure looks like. There's a bit about the Meridian Flip, which again is typically uh, device specific. There's a couple of things on the imaging options, whether you want to debayer, you want to detect stars and so forth. And also in terms of the sequences, it tells you where to put default sequences, targets and templates. And also you can specify where it pips picks up a default sequence when it powers up. And lastly on this sub-menu, plate solving. So plate solving is used primarily for three things. It's the initial centering of the telescope. It's typically used for recentering after a meridian flip. And it also can be used when you're running a program to work out whether a target has drifted from its initial position and whether it needs to recenter or not. And you can set two plate solvers I typically use ASTAP for the main one, and for the blind solver, 
I have a locally served version of astrometry.net. And the last menu system on the left hand side, on the primary menu, is things called the plugins. And the plugins are quite interesting. So if I click the available tab, over the last few months, the number of plugins have increased exponentially. And what these are, are very specific incremental instructions or incremental logic. And it can be used for all kinds of specific uses. You only have to load the ones you're interested in. So for instance, I have one here called connector, which allows me to dynamically connect to or disconnect from equipment. There's another one which is called the Goodnight System plugin, which gives um, notifications to a mobile phone if, if things are going well or badly. Other things that make use of scripts, for instance, if you want to copy all your data slowly through the internet to some other position, and so forth. And you can, these are updated regularly, um, and you can remove them and put them in to your heart's content. And it allows you to customize your experience and give you extra controls at your fingertips should you need it. So for instance, one on the to-do list is a Comet plugin, which will allow you to acquire Comet data and its tracking data, and it will bring it into the sequencer and so forth. So that's just a general overview of what's on the screen. And what we need to do in the subsequent videos is look at how we set up from the very first time, do a simple imaging sequence, and then in later videos we'll look at making them more sophisticated and more customised to specific um, users, say for instance for all night unattended imaging. But for now, I'm just going to put a lid on it for the moment and start planning the next video. Thanks for watching.